Gospel of St. Matthew, <clears throat> chapter number two, beginning with the 19th verse from the New Living Translation of the Bible. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel. Because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son Archelaus, who was afraid to he was afraid to go there. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said. He will be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord is blessed. <clears throat> for a few moments on this morning, I want to encourage you from the subject of forward focus. A forward focus. As servants of the Most High God, quit should never be in our vocabulary. Especially when God has placed upon us a divine purpose. The believer should never quit. In the midst of this divine purpose, we will endure ups and downs as we embrace the purpose that God has given us. But Reverend Carter, in the midst of those ups and downs, we often focused on the problems and the disruptions in our surroundings, sometimes more than we focus on the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Are y'all with me? We must understand as ambassadors of Christ, everything that we need to be fruitful and productive has already been placed inside of us by God. He has also, Brother Brown, provided us with the resources we need to be what God wants us to be and to complete what God has for us to accomplish. As we engage in the ministry that God has given us, our faith, our focus, and our confidence must be in God. It must be in God no matter what life looks like and no matter what we encounter. Furthermore, I want all of us to understand that just because we've been chosen by God does not remove the possibility of hard times. It does not remove the possibility of pain. And it most definitely don't remove opposition. In fact, being connected to God increases the probability that we are going to experience agitators and issues along the way. However, when trouble 
comes, and my brothers and my sisters, it will come. We must meditate on what scripture reveals to us about God when it clearly states that he is our refuge. He is our strength. Amen. And he is a very present help in times of trouble. And see, and because of that, we will not fear when the earthquake comes or when the mountains crumble into the sea. But we will stand firm because we are planted on the solid rock. This encourages us, our brothers and my sisters, that we can stand firm in the face of adversity while enduring the process that will lead us to victory in him. The songwriter says, there's victory in Jesus the King. In the midst of struggle, there is the blessedness that he brings. His praises, we will shout, and his praises we will sing. Because of the right, there's victory in Jesus. Jesus, our King. Do I got five folks that are walking in victory on today? But as we strive yeah. to move productively mm -hmm. and as people of God, it should be our mandate to move productively. We want to move God's kingdom forward. Yes, we, do. we don't want to take God's kingdom backwards. But if we are going to be productive on purpose, we must trust in God holistically and constantly grasp the fact who God, of who God is. And we must understand, check this out, the responsibility that he has given us individually and as a church. So there's a responsibility, right? That you have individually. And there's a responsibility, Jasmine, that we have collectively. So it behooves us to have a forward focus. We have to understand that when God gave us a place in his kingdom, he automatically assigned us a purpose. Too often, let me take this slow. Take Believers take the call to serve lightly. They think it's about them. But it is about God. And taking the call to serve lightly does more damage to the church and to the world than it does good. Because we must remember that we are placed here to fulfill His purpose, not to promote ourselves or our ideals. So in the midst of this, my brothers and my sisters, we don't have to worry because in the midst of our folly and in the midst of having agitators, God has given us individually and collectively a forward focus. You have to tell yourself, the Lord has made me new. I'm not going back. The Lord has washed me whiter than snow. I'm moving ahead. The Lord has made me new. There is purpose at the dawn of each new day. The Lord has washed me whiter than snow. I am taking off from where I am. I'm here to declare to you that your past 
is behind you. HNBC, old things have passed away. And the new is now. Somebody say fresh wind. Fresh because the Lord has made us new. See, a forward focus <clears throat> is a mindset of, let me clarify, a heart condition yes. that gives us a determination that we are not going to settle for less than success and we are purposely going to use the tool that God gave us to be successful for his glory and we are not going to allow negative influences to overtake us or control us. Simply, we're going to strive to do the best we can to do what God has called us to do. So the fruit of our hands brings honor and glory to him. Let me take you something on today. It ain't going to be easy. But I want the fruit of my hands to bring honor and glory to him. They're going to be stumbling blocks, contrariness, and trouble along life's narrow way. But see, I want the fruit of my hands to bring honor and glory to him. There are going to be folks that come against us and try to redirect and stagnate our purpose. But we want the fruit of our hands to bring honor and glory to him. We may find ourselves on the road to glory, broken and all alone. But we want the fruit of our hands to bring honor and glory to him. And we are determined, no matter what life throws our way, to have a forward focus. The earliest traditions Amen. of the church are unanimous in assigning authorship of the first gospel to Matthew. Yes, yes Matthew, he was a former tax collector Amen. who followed Jesus and became one of the twelve. I want you to grasp the fact that this gospel, Leon, is authentic. Amen. The gospel was penned between 50 AD and 60 AD, which brings us to the fact that John, Peter, and Paul were still alive along with countless eyewitnesses to the life, death, Amen. and resurrection yeah. of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. This is the real deal. Yeah. The overall theme of the book of Matthew is that it was an informative mm -hmm. account of the story of Jesus of Nazareth. Right. Matthew, as we know, was an eyewitness to Jesus. And we know that Jesus was the long-anticipated Messiah Amen. who is the fulfillment of God's promise of true peace yes. and deliverance to all people. Yes. Amen. All people should have shouted. Amen. So this was both to the Jew and to the Gentile. Matthew wrote this gospel as an evangelistic tool for the Jews. Amen. This evangelistic tool was to persuade unbelieving Jews to recognize Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. Amen. And at the same time, the gospel reveals to the Gentiles that salvation through Jesus Christ is for everybody. But in this text, we have Joseph. 
We have Mary and we have Jesus. They're now living in Egypt. The family, as we know, was in Jesus, in Egypt, due to the fact that the Magi had informed Herod the Great about the birth of the king of the Jews. Amen. This news angered Herod, as we know, and he ordered that all male children, two years old and younger, in and around Bethlehem, be killed. At that time, the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, telling him to get up and take his family to Egypt, which fulfills Hosea 11, verse 1. We see in the context that Joseph had a habit of being compliant with God. He was compliant to what God revealed to him. Let's take a step back. Remember when Mary got pregnant? She went to hang with her homegirls and she came back pregnant with a fellow that. <laughs> and he wanted to put it all away quietly. I'm in the book. Amen. But the angel said, What? In a dream, don't be afraid. And he was what? Compliant. Amen. When he told him to go to Egypt, he was compliant. And now, Herod has died. And see, when we look at the text, it lets us know that there was more than one person that wanted the king of the Jews dead. But in verse 20, the angel of the Lord told Joseph to gather his family yet again. Get up. Take the child and his mother back to Israel. Like you said, Herod was dead. But once he got to Israel, he realized that Archelaus, who was the son of Herod the Great, was now the king, and he became afraid. He was told yet again to get up. Get your family together and go to Galilee. And Joseph, yet again, was compliant. This lets us know that the people of God need to be compliant when God speaks. Because understand, this act of obedience was essential. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Because it was a fulfillment mm-hmm. of the prophetic word yes. stating he, yes. meaning Jesus, shall be called a Nazarene. Yes. This passage encourages us on today to trust that God is all knowing. Yes. We are to trust that God cares. Yes. We are to trust that God provides guidance and he is a protective God. And see, when we realize all of that, all right. when we realize that he knows all, mm-hmm. he loves all, Amen. he provides for all, and he is protective of all. Once we realize these things, we can trust him. But we have to realize it and actualize it. And then we can trust him and have a growing faith because we have confidence in obeying him. So in the text, we find a divine impartation from the angel of the Lord. When my note takers at, write that down. A divine impartation 
from the angel of the Lord. We find a fulfillment of a divine plan through the obedience of Joseph. Yeah. Amen. And we find an execution of that divine plan by Joseph to contribute in the fulfillment of a divine plan. Yeah. So what should we recognize when there is a push to proceed under pressure? Number one, we recognize that we get up and move when God tells us to get up and move. Amen. No matter what the situation may be. Number two, we trust and we recognize that God has a plan that was in place prior to creation. And we do our best to equip ourselves and prepare ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually to fulfill that plan. Amen. Let me tell you something about that. It ain't going to be easy. But it's our mandate to fulfill that plan. Number three, we recognize that according to our preparation, we are to execute God's plan in excellence to fulfill his purpose. The songwriter says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Amen. Trust Amen. and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And obey. See, if we desire to move how God wants us to move, we must trust him yes. and we must obey him. Yes, Lord. If we want to do our best, to be our best, we must trust him and obey him. If we desire to encourage one another and then draw the lost, we must trust him and obey him. If we desire a fresh wind yes. in this new season of ministry, yeah. we must trust him and obey him. Yeah. See, there must be a desire to hear, yeah. for there's no other way. There should be a desire to learn, for there's no yeah. other way. There should be a longing to be obedient, yeah. for there's no other way. There should be a desire yeah. to endure the process that will lead us to purpose. Yeah. For there's no other way our focus should be for us to be change agents. For there's no other way it should be our sincere purpose to be imitators of Jesus Christ my brothers and my sisters, there's no other way. Understand that in God, we are faith raisers. In God, we are burden lifters. In God, we are to encourage one another. In God, we are to walk by faith and not by sight. In God, we are to extend an unfailing love. In God, we are to forgive and seek reconciliation. In God, we are to be godly influences as we lead the lost and encourage one another. In God, we are representatives of an old time God, a compassionate God, a forgiving God, a merciful God, and all sufficient Savior. He's more 
that enough who have seen to be adequate. He makes the abundant look small. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know that say of the Lord is an investment in our state of righteousness is our desire. We must trust him and take him at his word. If we want to make a lasting impact, we must trust him and take him at his word. If we want to be ambassadors of holiness, we must trust him and take him at his word. If we desire to convert the lost, if we desire to encourage one another, we must trust him and take him at his word. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from many well banks and sinners run beneath their flood. Those all their guilty stains, my brothers and my sisters. Change is on the horizon. We have a forward focus. Yesterday is long, but looking back, we have a forward focus. Don't get caught up in the negative, because we have a forward focus. We don't have pleasurable anticipation in the car, because we have a forward focus. Haters will come, haters will go, but we have a forward focus. We may endure for a night, but we have a forward focus. We understand that joy awaits us in the morning because we have a forward focus. Because we are compliant to God, we can't be moved. But we are compliant to God, we can't be stopped. When we are compliant to God, we may get delayed, but we won't be denied. When we are compliant to God, we won't go back. We won't turn around. No retreat. No surrender. When we compliant to God, no more anxiety. No more worry, no more falling from my day, no more falling ray for the monkey dog. The songwriter says, they have not a right man on our side. The man of God's own choosing does ask that they be Christ Jesus. It is he. If we need deliverance, Christ Jesus, it is he. When we need to be healed, Christ Jesus, it is he. When we need more unity, Christ Jesus, it is he. When we need to be led, Christ Jesus, it is he. When we need to be corrected, Christ Jesus, it is he. If we need more joy, more peace, if we're lost, then we need to be saved. Christ Jesus, it is he. If you need more security, call on Jesus. We are desiring a forward focus. Do I got five folks who are ready to move forward? A forward focus as we walk. A forward focus as we talk. A forward focus in ministry. A forward focus in leadership. A forward focus in our relationship. With God, a forward focus in our relationship with one another, a forward focus with our friends and acquaintances, a forward focus in HMBC, a forward focus in our fellowships, and a forward focus in our association. Thank God for the forward focus.
So what should we recognize? When there is a push to proceed under pressure. You recognize that we get up and move when God tells us to get up and move. No matter what the situation might be. Number two, we recognize that God has a plan and it's been in place before creation. And we do our best to equip ourselves and prepare ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually to fulfill his plan. And last but not least, we recognize that according to our preparation, we are to execute God's plan in excellence to fulfill his divine purpose. Amen. If we desire a forward focus, my brothers and my sisters, we must learn to listen. Amen. To what God says. To internalize what God says. And like the songwriter says, trust and obey. Hymn number 171, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. God bless you. Have a forward focus. Go to the church world. Oh, 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 oh